Okay, so John, this one caught your eye. The power of the CRT remains undiminished. And um, we now have confirmation of a specific CRT running at 700 hertz. Uh, yes. <laughs> I mean, there are some, dare I say it, caveats. But this is funny, isn't it? Yes, to say the least. So it seems to be this, uh, it's an Iyama Vision Master Pro 512 CRT. And um, I actually wonder if, I feel like this should be possible on some other really high-end CRTs as well. The one thing I noticed that the this specific CRT, when you look up the vertical resolution, uh, for, sorry, vertical yeah. refresh rate is 180. And a lot of higher end other CRTs are 160. So this may be a little bit specific oh, to this monitor. So maybe not that high, but I bet you can get to... But okay, so the, the fun thing about CRTs and in Windows is that they're not really limited by an EDID when, right. as long as you don't have an adapter that limits it. And you can kind of just like mess around with all like the custom, like the back porch, the front porch, yeah. and the, the various uh, elements of how the PC is outputting to the CRT. And because of the way that a CRT intercepts that signal, it doesn't really you don't need to conform to standards in the same way that you do on like a, like a flat panel with its digital interface and everything. Right. I mean, that's how people have gotten stuff like VRR working on a CRT right. when it's really not supposed to, and there's no circuitry for it, but there has been ways to do it. So they basically found the right settings. They were able to dial in at an obscenely low resolution, by the way, I think it's like, what, what was it? it was like 240 by 120 maybe or 320 something? by 160 Three, uh, maybe 320 some, by 160 it was, it was a very admittedly super low resolution it was, but it was basically to... the original arc on nintendo switch <laughs> i think it uh, i'm gonna go back and check through our channel there but i think it was something like 130p uh, <laughs> right a classic yeah. Okay, yeah. 320 that, that by resolution yeah 120, 240, sorry, my bad. 240 by then, 130 mm. Okay, I'm looking at the video now. And I'm seeing one where you got up to 700 at 320 by 120. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool! That actually, by the way, gives you this nice like scan lined look. It it looks pretty good, uh, but it's not, you know, if, it's if, very low res. If, if you're the saying point 130p is, is, that, is like you know, or 120p is a good look, that's that comment will haunt you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I mean when it people always say that all oh, 240. These low resolutions are bad, but for like retro pixel art stuff, the stuff yep. can look awesome, right? And that kind of resolution would never work on like a flat panel, just fed into it. Even if it even if it technically worked, it would just be smeared <laughs> to heck and look terrible. But on a CRT, you get those nice thick scan lines, and it just looks it actually looks like visually nice. Right. But that also means if you're using like Windows, like they're doing here, you have like no screen real estate. <laughs> you can maybe fit like the start button <laughs> into your window. <laughs> it's, it's super low res, but it's 700 Hertz. And however useful that may or may not be because of that resolution, the fact that they got this thing to 700 Hertz is nuts mm -hmm. yeah yeah you're uh, right i'm looking at the video now john 320 by 120 i think 700 right yeah you should point out retro gaming base is the channel that did this and we will we will if i assuming i remember because i really do put a link in the video description that is inevitably below uh but yeah this is a great video just for the lulls <laughs> so so that's actually half of the Mega Drive resolution that you would typically see. Well, I guess Mega Drive is more like 224, but it's like technically 320 by 240 is what I'm thinking here. And this is 320 by 120. So if you could get a specific type of retro game, maybe that would be useful. But this is this is more just about can they do it? And they were able to get there. And I think it's pretty amazing that they're able to go beyond pretty much all publicly available monitors. Like I think there's been some like thousand Hertz prototypes out there, but I don't believe there's any actual monitor like available to consumers at this that can support moment. beyond like, isn't like 480 or I, what is the and max? Maybe even actually? just exactly 500. 500 possibly. Yeah. Uh, for me, I'm, I would love to see this in person, uh, not in a modern windows context. I, I, you can no. do this stuff in windows XP or, or even, you know, Windows 98. Oh, he's well, doing it in Windows 11 here. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, yeah, you don't need 
modern windows to drive high refresh rates it's just a matter of uh setting it uh, old windows versions of nvidia drivers allowed you to do the exact same thing he shows in the video uh pretty sure and yeah. uh yeah i would like to see this on low resolution content uh you know i i could imagine playing the original like quake at this level of resolution and it would be fine enough 3d content um yeah i could play unreal like this any other old game i think it would look great actually agreed mm -hmm. well i think you know um we've got like 320 by 240 happening there sorry 320 by 200 maybe mm -hmm. there's a lot of tests going yeah. on here i'm just sort of cycling through the video but you know that's all happening at 500 hertz right. which is pretty awesome I I actually think probably the best one for usability is uh, he's sure there is he's got a 300 hertz 300 one? 300 hertz is 576 by 360 which is high enough for like specific types of games like quake and such and maybe even modern stuff like it's still usable enough to some degree but the thing the thing is is like we're talking about these high refresh rates right but when when you actually look at a CRT I would almost say that like 300 hertz on a crt would be equivalent to like 600 hertz on an lcd in terms of how you visually perceive it maybe even better, right like yeah. 60 60 hertz on a crt looks significantly better than any flat panel like it's not even close it's so much smoother and cleaner looking and it feels just better to the eye 120 is the same 120 on a crt absolutely smokes any 120 hertz flat panel you need to you need to double that for sure to get anywhere close to the sort of like the perceptible motion clarity and smoothness so like just the nature of being a crt gives it an advantage already so when you're at, i can't even imagine 700 hertz that that has to be like i mean people talk about all oh, the human eye can only see x amount of frames and i really wonder like at what point we get there where it's like the re refresh rate is so high that you can no longer detect any sort of like meaningful change like could could we see a difference between 700 and 800 right, i don't know i don't know i want to i'd love to find out isn't the blurbusters guy saying 1000 is basically the end point oh so he's talked about this in the past i don't know what the current science is but what he suggested was that 1000 hertz on a sample and hold display can get you sort of the equivalent of crt motion like clarity without any sort of strobing right mm -hmm. okay. so that's basically thousand hertz overcomes supposedly sample and holds limitations that's okay. basically what it is is it gets rid of that blurring that your eyes see when looking at a flat panel um obviously that's not necessary on a crt i guess the so you know without the one thing that i'm interested about ultra high ref, refresh rate displays how does a 540 hertz sounds cool lcd out there it looks like so that i think that might be the max okay. Uh, one thing I'm interested about ultra high refresh rate is also the ability on LCDs or whatever flat panel is to maybe start doing, um, CRT emulation then when you get to a high enough refresh rate by right. refreshing the image differently or inserting black lines in a specific way to start looking like, a you know, the gun shooting <laughs> the lights onto a CRT mask. I think that would be interesting to see because we already have, I think with 4K panels and CRT emulation shaders, we can get the look of the like static right. image to very, very similar to what you'd see on a real CRT. But the motion clarity is still one aspect where we could, it would be really interesting to see that because it would be great for emulating things like arcade games, or just anything from earlier eras, like interlaced content as well, too. I just think this I is agree. really interesting, uh, just sort of experimentation. It's just fun to see it. Mm -hmm. Not sure it has any particular application to actual gaming, but it's just great to see it. <laughs> what mm -hmm. can I say? I mean, if you have one of these and you want to game at these ultra high refresh rates, but it feels pretty darn amazing. You could totally play some... Uh, some doom eternal on there <laughs> seven 700 frames per second it's quite doable i think especially at that res i, I wonder if there's like a, a hard-coded limit on current processors of how fast you can push vulcan or dx12 because even just like basic things like setting up the device i wonder if that has like a couple 
you know, like a millisecond of time or something like that, just based on I'd the CPU. I don't, I, I don't know, but I think that's one thing that might get in the way of actually a consistent 700 hertz. So the big thing for me, though, is obviously CRT R&D stops decades ago, right? Like this is a 2002 monitor and I know it's not really viable. It's not green. It's, you know, there's limited by size, weight, et cetera. But I really, really wish we had seen what was possible with these companies if they pushed like CRT research further. Like what, what could have been done? Like clearly this is like flat panels have been trying to get here for decades now mm -hmm. and they're still not there. Like they have other benefits. I'm not saying that obviously a good flat panel has its own huge benefits over these CRTs, but there's things the CRTs can do that you just can't do on other monitors or other display types. And yet the research on it stopped back, I mean, mid 2000s, right. probably mm -hmm. beyond that. Nobody's really pushing the limit of what these things can do. Uh, I was just playing on the FW 900 last night and just marveling at how just crystal clear it looks in motion. Again, it's just, it's, it's staggeringly good looking. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then there's even things like, you know, it took until HDR to even be able to simulate the look of like vector monitors, right? right? Mm -hmm. Like if you, if you haven't seen like a vector monitor, like the old, where they're just drawing lines instead of pixels, like that from the 80s, 70s, whatever, that looks like what you might consider HDR level brightness. Like there's parts of those lines and those dots that are so bright, like it, it's just it's so interesting and neat to see that with your own eyes and it's it's truly you're like how does this even work mm -hmm. uh, and hdr displays can actually kind of match that now if you're doing emulation but even then it still doesn't quite have that look so so john um, you, you've got that um high refresh rate oled right the cheap one that you were sent yeah yeah the 241 what's what, who is it from again uh that is KTC. Right. It was supposed to be the cheapest 27 inch high refresh rate OLED, right? I mean, yeah. Is that it's the cheapest pretty, one I could find? How does that work, you know, these days in terms of high refresh rate and OLED? Is it? I got to say, it looks, it looks good. It looks real good. And when I use it, I've actually used it more than I would expect to spot. So I have the 120 hertz uh, C2 here, which is a 42 inch OLED. And for some games, I do feel like that smaller 240 hertz one, there is an appreciable jump in clarity that you get from using it that makes it extremely appealing. I feel like OLED in particular couples really well with high refresh rates. And it's, you know, already at 240, it's, it's almost overcoming some of the issues. Like you, if you do like a smooth scrolling panning, you can still see some persistence blur, but it's getting significantly less. I'd imagine the 480 Hertz ones are even crazier mm -hmm. in that regard. Um, I'm the problem with all of this stuff though, is that it means that the content has to get there. Like it's, it's okay if the monitor can overcome sample and hold blur and other issues by these high refresh rates, but actually running content at that, that's tough. Yeah, and what if you want to use something that's not a PC? That's also tough, right? So I want to see more research put into on the display side of how you can take, like, say, a 60 hertz signal and make it look clearer. Take advantage of what the panel can do and, like, interpret that signal and do something to it to make it look much, much clearer in motion. You know, obviously strobing is a thing. There's other th solutions as well, right. but I would like to see more research and work poured into that 